Good afternoon, learners and teachers, and welcome to the third telematic session of business studies. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to deal with management and leadership. But before we do that, I would like to ask you to just to sit back and to be relaxed. And I trust that you're going to enjoy this session with us. Please let us know where you are tuned in so that we can acknowledge your presence. As the SMS number is 31498, 31498. I see that New Orleans and Mannenberg High School are already tuned in. So I would like to welcome the educators and the teachers from those two schools. Learners and teachers, yes, I'm not alone today. Um, I'm being joined this afternoon by a good friend and colleague, Melanie Lewis. Melanie, would you just like to tell the learners and teachers just a something about yourself? Um, good afternoon, Lester. Yes, we are colleagues. We work together. Um, and we are going to master management and leadership for him today. Yes, learners and teachers, Melanie is a seasoned business studies, firstly teacher and then also a subject advisor. So we wait expectantly to hear what she's going to share with us and share her knowledge and experiences with us. Yes, learners, um, the slide clearly tells you that you must please keep calm and then you are able to master the content of management and leadership. You are able to do that. So again, let me just remind you to put it into context where does the management and leadership falls. Management and, lead management and leadership falls under the main topic, business venture. Right. So you may not have a copy of the telematics resource booklet. I wonder the technician can just give us an overhead shot. The telematics booklet, you may not have a copy of it. Most of the content we're going to cover today will be in the booklet, particularly if you refer to page number 14, from page number 14 up until page number 17. If you'd like to have a copy of this booklet, uh, my email address will be on the next slide, ldmombek at gmail.com. Please send me a mail and I will gladly send you a copy of both the English version and the Afrikaans version of the notes and also the PowerPoint. Learners and teachers, the next address, email address, uh, will be the WCD curriculum website links. So we've got some interesting videos that both learners and teachers can access. Can I just give an example of some of the content that we cover? It's about four or five minute videos of topics covering the main topic. So if it can make a copy of the, the link, I wonder if you can just take, use a camera of your phone and take a picture, then you can access that link and then copy that link and then access the content related to those links. Melanie, yes, today we're going to talk about managers and leaders and systems and responsibility and head and plan and goals and followers and leaders. But I think it's important that we need to know who is who in the zoo. Absolutely correct, Lister. So I think it's important that we try and get a distinction between what is a manager what is a leader? And what is a leader? Yes. Okay, so if we can just briefly look at some of the quotations. Managers, they help people see themselves as they are, whereas leaders, they help people to see themselves better than they are. And so, Melanie, what would be the next quotation? Leaders inspire people to want to do something where managers hold people accountable for doing something. So they sound the same, but it's not actually the same. The next quotation is, management is doing things right, whilst leadership refers to doing the right things. Yes. And then Melanie also. When I talk to managers, I get the feeling that they are important, when I talk to leaders, I get the feeling that I am important. I think that just encapsulates the difference between the two, eh? Yes. That managers, when you talk to them, then they, they are the important people. But when you talk to leaders, then you feel like you're the important one. Yes. So, 
if we can summarize it up, a manager will tell his group, will say to his group, go. Yes. While a leader will say, let's go. So he will go with him. Yes. And he'll take them on that path. And I think what's important for us to, to, to point out here is, is that managers are focused on getting the job done. Yeah. where leaders are possibly focused on growing the person Absolutely. or the persons. Absolutely. Melanie, I see yeah, there's quite a few learners um, yeah. tuned in. I've got Amazi Secondary School watching the lesson also and then there's quite a few big views Peak also tuned in. Yeah. And then um, Sinanjongo High School is also tuned in. Please let us know. The SMS number is 31498. So, Melanie, the learners are required under leadership and management to know certain content. Can you just briefly go through that content quickly yes. that they must know? So learners, you need to know, you need to be able to define the terms leadership and management, which means you must be able to clearly show the difference or distinguish between leadership and management and remember that both of those aspects will earn you two marks each. Remember to write the most important fact there so that you score the two marks and to write in full sentences. Then you would need to discuss or distinguish between the different leadership styles. We'll qualify all of them in a moment. Evaluate or critically analyze and that means you have to look at the advantages or disadvantages of the different leadership styles. You need to be able to apply your knowledge using the leadership styles from given case studies or scenarios. You will need to be able to make recommendations on the leadership styles based on information given in case studies or, or scenarios then you would need to suggest or recommend situations in which different leadership styles can be applied. Discuss or distinguish between the different theories of management leader and leadership. And then finally, you would have to discuss the role or the effect. Um, and here you would need to give the positives and negatives of having a positive or negative personal attitude in success and leadership. Thank you, Melanie. Learners and teachers, uh, the content that Melanie just um, read to you now was taken directly from the 2015 examination guidelines. So please make sure that you've got each of those headings in your notebooks and that you've got sufficient notes relating to each of those headings. They can easily ask you a, an essay question yes. based on leadership and management. Yeah. I think just important, the last one, Melanie, discuss the role, effect, the positive, negatives of a positive or a negative. So learners don't have to know both. They just have to concentrate on one. It's either the positive one or the, or the negative. negative one. I just want to say they also, Lester, if they use the word impact, they would need to remember they must write both positive and negative. That's correct, it's if they use the word impact. Sometimes they use the word implication also. Yes. Negative yes. and positive. Negative and positive. Right on. So let's get the ball rolling. Okay. Melanie, the difference between leadership and management. So, Linus, what is leadership all about? A business leader is to provide the overall vision and goals of the business and leaders have the ability to inspire and motivate others. So the emphasis there is the overall strategic goals. What do we want to achieve? Yes. That is developed by the leader. And in order to do that, he inspires and he motiva motivates the employee, employees so within he, the organization. So he's using his personality to win the person or the employee or staff member's trust. But Melanie, it doesn't only occur within a business. No. It also operates within the um, political spheres. Yes. Where you've got leaders who uh, need to inspire the, um, either the members of the party or also the voters. Yes. But it also happens within the religious organizations. It happens. It happens within churches. It happens within 
schools. In schools? In the um, classroom? In classrooms. So the concept of leadership is not confined to one specific place or context only. Um, and similarly for management, the difference between the two, although they are very similar, the difference between the two is that management is based on a specific place or hierarchy or position that the manager finds himself, him or herself in. So management would go about organizing employees. Yeah. Yes. Getting them to get the work done. Yes. So he, he's got to, in actual fact, determine his way yes. and his one goal is to make sure that the business makes a profit. Yes. He's, that he's driven to do that. Or so, to get the work done. To get the so work done. So that that can happen. Okay, to get the work done so that that can happen. Um, Managers also then set up systems and procedures to keep the organization functioning optimally. And they do this by directing using the um, management tasks. Task, yeah. And so that's the difference. Managers are really task focused, where leaders are people focused. Okay, great stuff. There was just the one request. They say, can the female teacher speak a little bit louder? Okay, we will try. I wonder if the technician can perhaps um, up up the sound a little bit so that we can the learners can hear the the female teacher. Okay. I think it must be a learner from Kuruman, which is quite far from here. Hey? Okay. <laughs> right. So, if you can distinguish between now, we've got a difference between those two concepts. But if you could look at the differences between leadership and management in terms of specific functions, yeah. in terms of the role in the organisation, what is the difference between a manager and a leader? So the manager acts mainly as the administrator, as we mentioned before, um, doing, getting the, the task done, being task oriented. And so they do this by using those management tasks, by controlling, directing people and resources according, accordingly so that they can achieve the objectives that have been set out. Right, so in the organization, the, the leadership will be provided by the person who is the motivator of change. So should change be necessary in an organization, that will be the responsibility of the leader and not the manager. Yes. And the leader will then guide and motivate and he will be the communicator of whatever information needs to be conveyed to the people working within that organization. So learners is quite a clear distinction between the two. Manager, you will do the administrator functions. It's specified, he it's needs to do it. Focused. Task focused. Task focused in terms of, I think we call it fault, Melanie. It's planning, yes. organizing, leading, and control. That's correct. Whereas uh, leader, you will be the you will inspire the people, you will motivate the people. Yes. Okay, so that's in terms of their roles in the organization. In terms of the purpose, Melanie, management. Management is the function. And so the manager will go about ensuring that everything that is expected of his staff members, the employees, everybody working with him is done. And so he will, he will pretty much um, take on a monitoring role there and a supervisory role. Whilst the leader will look in terms of relationship, how does he build relationships with the people working in his organization? He needs to set up a vision. He needs to inspire them when they are down. He needs to communicate ideas with them, and then whatever changes needs to be brought about, he needs to gain acceptance, yes. or they need to gain acceptance um, of it through the leader. Manager will just be task driven. Yes. He's got a target, he's got to reach it. Okay, Melanie, if you can just look at examples of where management is involved and where leadership will be involved. So managers, some of the things that they do as part of the planning is to draw up budgets and business plans, for example. Um, and they will 
mobilize the necessary finances accordingly um, according to these business plans. They will also then monitor the progress of the people, how far they've done um, with their plans and they will then review those plans as well uh, because that would be part of the management function. And they will have a checklist yes. that they will use to monitor the progress. That's correct. Whereas a leader, he will look at the strategies of the business. Are they the current strategies? Are they in line with what the business would like to achieve? If not, what new strategies can be employed? And then the leader will also rec they recognize the potential of the employees and you will then either uh, recommend that certain employees must be used in other positions, whereas the manager, if you are doing a certain type of work, you will just continue doing it uh, and there will be no difference in the terms of your um, responsibilities, whereas the leader will look for potential within the employee and see where can we use him better in the organization. That's correct. And you will then inspire him to do that. Melania, we've got a question here. Um, I'm not too sure if it's a learner. Lucido, Lucido mm -hmm. asks, how does a leader motivate workers in the workforce or in, in the, the workplace? workplace? What did you say? What would be one of the things that a leader can do to motivate workers? Well, first of all, a leader has to gain the trust of workers. And they do that by inspiring them. And often they also, there's a saying that goes, they lead by example. Absolutely. So they model the behavior that they would want the workers to have and to demonstrate. And that is the way in which they show the, the workers what they want from them or what they expect of them. Yeah. And sometimes workers are, are taken by a particular leader because of their personality or their charm. Yeah. Because they're always doing things in, in a manner that they would like to do things. And that's another way in which leaders then inspire workers, convince them actually in an indirect way um, to, to do what they want them to do. Yes, Melanie, I was going to say that this learner is actually jumping the gun because yes. we're going to look at different leadership styles. Yes. And uh, one way of motivating um, workers is by involving them in the process. Yes. I think another way is by providing them with incentives. Yeah. Um, so all that will be covered with our different um, leadership styles. But thank you for that question. Yeah. I think the learners, judging from the SMSs that are coming in, I think the learners are, are, are wanting to get into the different leadership styles quite quickly. Um, yes. Because as a peer way, I think it is, the other definition of directing is leading and is questioning that. The other definition of okay, directing is leading. leading. Is that term in terms of the task of management? Um, directing, leading, yes. Yes, I think so. I, yep, absolutely. I think that is where one sees the narrowness between management and leadership. Yeah, I want to just have an overhead shot. What um, Apiwe is saying is that you've got planning, organizing, leading, and then it's also called directing. Yes. That's and correct. then we've got the controlling. Yes. Thank you for that, Piwi. I think our learners are wide awake, eh? <laughs> I'm extremely glad about that. Um, KD, KDJ, inspire and make them feel comfortable. Oh, that's a beautiful yeah. description of a leader. Perfect. Um, you inspire your followers, your workers, and make them feel comfortable. And I trust that our teachers are leaders in the classrooms and that they make you feel comfortable and inspire you to achieve the best possible results that you Perfect. can that you can achieve. Okay. Thank you for that. Melania, see the whole of Peakview. Big great to also tune in and we say welcome to them and also to the educator. Right off, that was quite good looking at the difference between leadership and, and management. management. Now, Melanie, this is one aspect of the work that many learners that they get confused with. Yeah. I think it's important that we state it here uh, very hot, loud and clear. What's the difference between a leadership style and a leadership theory? Because you can be asked to answer a question either on leadership styles 
and all leadership theories, or it could be a combination. Yes. And so then you should be able to explain both of them. So, Melanie, the leadership styles. Can you just briefly run through that? So there are six leadership styles learners. And as you can see, they are autocratic, democratic, bureaucratic, laissez-faire, transactional, and charismatic. Now you guys know all of this, but let's just refresh your memory. So the autocratic leadership style is where the workforce or staff members are told what to do. Um, they don't have any participation in, in decision making. No negotiation takes place. They just have to do as they are told. Yeah. Malin, it's just important that word, um, I almost said in brackets, but on the right hand side, autocratic. Yes. Lennis, you must also know this word, word authoritarian. So, because it appears in the examination guidelines, yes. the examiner can either ask autocratic or authoritarian. Okay. And so you should be able to know that, eh? Similarly with democratic. And participative. And participative, participative. And so the democratic leadership style is the style where the leader would invite everybody that works with him or staff members to participate in decision making or to give inputs. And he's also very mindful of their opinions although ultimately that person will make a decision. Um, Melanie, it just reminds me, remember I asked you to um, develop the PowerPoint of this presentation on management and leadership, and then you invited me to be part of that process. <laughs> so you're actually a democratic leader. Eh? Now before we um, jump the gun, uh, let us just firstly, Liza's female, the other term they used to know, need to know is Free reign leadership. Free reign. So it's important for learners to, to be familiar with both terms, um, especially if they are asked one or the other Absolutely. term, so that they know when they are, are defining these leadership styles and they don't become confused because they see something that is different. Maybe a, a tip for the educators, maybe they can put those leadership styles on a poster and paste it in the classroom. That would be a good idea and it, it would help the learners to remember. Absolutely. Um, learners could also make it part of their glossary at the back of their notebooks. Absolutely. Now, just before we um, step off the leadership styles, because we're going to expand on that again, there's a question from um, to Lily and um, the question is, can you be a leader and a manager at the same time in the workplace? Um, the answer is yes. Sometimes the functions, they overlap. Uh, so it's possible for a person to be a manager and a leader. Absolutely. So he's got to put on his uh, manager's hat, and at another occasion he put on his, his leadership, leadership hat. hat. So that is quite possible. Unfortunately, time does not permit us to still go into the details of that. Uh, but send may, us a mail. May and I we just will say, Lisa, there as well, um, in cases like that, leaders then and managers would make different decisions and so they would apply these leadership styles and the leadership theories depending on the need or the situation that arises and that's when we say they make management decisions or leadership decisions that's great melanie there's a lot of questions coming in i'm so See grateful that. that we are getting questions <laughs> but it's on the same line yes. um, does leadership and management overlap from Lucinda. Lucinda, yes, indeed, it does in certain instances. Yes, it does. Not always, but in certain instances, it does overlap. Um, Taman is saying that the sound is breaking up continuously. Taman, we sincerely apologize for that, and we trust that the technicians on your side will rectify the situation. However, let me assure you that the content of this presentation and video will be on YouTube before the end of the week, and then you can, at your leisure, look at the whole presentation yeah. again. This is just another, another um, SMS. Transactional is a leadership style or a theory because our book state it as a theory. And that's from Lily. Yes. Um, what happened was that they changed the 
2015 examination guidelines. Mm. And so the 2015 examination guidelines put transactional as a leadership style. Yes. So I'm glad you brought that up, young lady. Um, the books, the textbooks, and teachers, please, you cannot follow the textbook um, as it is the, as if it is the gospel. Yes. The textbooks should be based on what is in the examination guidelines. So the examination guidelines overrides whatever is in the textbook. The other problem is that the textbooks were all written before the examination guidelines came out. And so educators, you need to make sure that you consult your 2015 examination guidelines to ensure that the learners are taught the correct concepts and content. Great. But thank you for that question. Who, who, who asked that question? Maybe. Was it a visitor? Uh, I would like that visitor to um, identify him or herself because it's an important question. And that's one of many other changes that occurred within the business studies curriculum. Yeah. Right, so questions is coming in fast and furious, but we are grateful for that. Eh? We also just need to go back to leadership styles and theories. So remember learners that bureaucratic, transactional and charismatic leadership styles are also important. They are often asked and it's important to be able to distinguish between all of the six leadership styles. Thank you, Mel. Mel, can we just go to the leadership theories because indeed yes. we're going to look at the leadership styles again. Um, Linus, just a reminder, we will have um, some okay, questions faster. that you will have to respond to later on. Please make sure that you warm up your fingers already uh, because we are all going to ask you some questions. The okay. SMS number is 31498, 31498. Please let us know where you're watching it from so that we can um, acknowledge your presence. Melanie, leadership theories, can we just briefly go through that quickly? Okay. There are only four. There are only four. So let's start with the first one. You have leaders and you have followers. And that will happen in any situation. Then you have situational leadership theories. And you will have the transitional one and the transformational one. And they sound very close. Um, so about transitional, it's when you are moving towards a period of change. And so it infers there's a process that's involved. About transformational theories, that's when change is busy happening, but you, the participants, the followers, constantly need to be reminded of the goal. Absolutely. And then about the situational leadership theory, that is one that is very tricky and is quite an interesting one as well because that's the theory that implies there's no one way to do something or to lead or, or no one specific theory that's going to be followed at any given time. It depends on the situation that presents itself. Absolutely. I just love the way you said transitional because your voice went high up <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm sure the learners in Kuruman also heard that one. <laughs> okay. um, but again, we, we, we're getting some uh, comments. They say, um, Joshua Saunders says the presentation is so interesting, but the sound is breaking up. Oh, Joshua, gosh. I'm extremely sorry about that, but please speak to one of your teachers and see if they can um, make sure that the sound gets restored. Uh -huh. I, mean, I, I think we need to answer this question from um, Tulele. Uh, he or she asked, which one has a bigger salary, a leader or a manager? We're not going to give them the answer. No. We're going to ask them to tell us. After listening to what we said all about leadership and management, I wonder if any one of you can tell me which one gets the bigger salary, the leader or the manager and perhaps in brackets if you can tell me what's the reason why he or she gets a bigger salary than the other one okay but while we're waiting for your answer we are going to continue and then there's been a request Lester yeah. that we please repeat the three most important leadership styles well let me can I just say that all six leadership styles are important yes so we will we'll, we'll, um, double your request yes. by repeating all six for you. Yes. Just kindly repeat that for the learner. So remember, you have to know 
the autocratic or authoritarian leadership style and that is the one where staff members have no participation in decision making at all. They basically are told what to do. Democratic and participative leadership style is the same thing. That's where everybody's opinions are taken into account even though the manager is ultimately responsible for the decision making or the leader. Bureaucratic leadership, that's all about following rules and regulations, um, really very pedantically. Then you have the laissez-faire or free reign leadership style and that's all about the employees um, demonstrating their knowledge and what their abilities. Then you have the transactional leadership style and the charismatic leadership style. Now transactional leadership style is about the punishment and the reward system. Mm. And then the charismatic leadership style is really focused on personality. That's where the leader will use his or her charm to get the followers to do what is necessary. Melanie, we've got quite a few responses to that question. <laughs> Which one earns the highest salary? Um, yeah. the, here's a visitor. Please um, let us know your name so that you could be giving us the correct answer and that we can acknowledge you and your school. But um, a visitor says it's a leader and then another, another visitor says a manager. Yeah. So it's one for leader, one, one for manager. Then, and then and Arif is. said the leader and the, the reason for that is because he or she is the director. Um, Kanya says a manager and Tharwa says also the manager. David says it depends on what the work they do. David, I think we've explained what they do, eh? Yes, that's the great. different roles that they play. And um, Sia Bulela says that charismatic leadership is almost like a charm to get people to appoint him or her. Yes. <laughs> and what I want to just emphasize there, Sia Bulela, is that with charismatic, it's where you use your personality. And yes, it is about the charm, but it's how to influence people to do the work. Yes. Well, I'm glad um, the learners are responding fast yes. and furious and it's split 50-50 yes. learners' responses, managers and leaders. Yes. Now, what, do you, what, do you, what would you say? Who earns a bigger salary? And don't look at me. <laughs> Lisa earns the bigger salary. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, manager or leader? It depends on what they do, really. Yeah. It depends on what they do. I think it's clear cut. I think the leader will earn the higher salary. Um, for the simple reason that he's got greater responsibility. Um, he needs to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. He needs to be innovative. He needs to come with other ideas. And so it depends on the responsibility of the person. And my understanding is that the leader will have greater responsibility. It's like asking who earns a higher salary, a judge or a magistrate. Mm. Okay. Um, so it would be the judge. Um, so yes, um, for the learner who originally asked that question, um, the answer would be for the leader would earn the highest salary. But it depends for where he works. The manager could be working for Gupta, the Guptas, and then um, he could be earning a, a salary higher than everybody else. Okay, to move on. Right, on. let's look at the next one. Okay. Now, I think you've covered most of them. Yeah, we've covered most of this. So just to consolidate learners very quickly, the autocratic leadership style is about the manager, autocratic manager, who likes to take decisions on their own without consulting the staff. Yeah. Okay, next one. Then your democratic or participative leader is where this person or this style invites the team to contribute ideas and participate in the decision making process. Okay, the next one. As we said before, the bureaucratic leadership style is all about ensuring that employees follow the rules and policies. So would you say the, the speaker in parliament, she would follow the bureaucratic leadership style because she would tell them, you've got to do this, you, I don't recognize your end, please sit. And she will follow, she, we would classify her as a bureaucratic as leader. As a bureaucratic. Yes. Lies this fear free reign? 
Um, the style is referred to as the hands-off approach because the task is delegated to followers with little or no direction given. Okay, so it's uh, oh, you just do as you please. I trust what you do yes. will be there. It's not just do everything, do anything. I and trust what you do, you do it. And this style lends itself to followers showing their creativity. Absolutely. Yep. That's, that's indeed true. And transactional. Then finally, the transactional leadership focuses on motivating followers through a system of reward and punishment. And so here it's all about the more you do and the quicker you do it possibly, the higher your reward would be. And if you don't comply or do what is needed, then there would be some form of punishment involved. Okay, so the, 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 the leader will set a target yes. to the employees and if they exceed the target, they will then get be rewarded. Yes. Uh, I think SARS use that quite effectively if they exceed the amount of money that they ought to collect, then their employees get an extra bonus. We should all go and work for SARS. Absolutely. Um, if anybody of SARS is watching, please um, let us know we must send our CVs to, because we also would like to be rewarded in that way. Okay. I know the people who work works for the Auditor General, they get a 14th check. So if they exceed their targets, they get not just a 13th check, but also a 14th check. Well, that is, that's really nice, eh? That is good. I see that the SMS line is ablaze. Yeah, can you just, somebody ask the charismatic, can you just... Um, yes. Let's go back to charismatic leadership. And this style is based on the magnetic charm and inspirational personality of the leader. Okay, charismatic. So, can you think of any examples here? Oh, we have many examples, but the most... The foremost one on my mind is of former President Nelson Mandela who was or who demonstrated the charismatic leadership style. Okay, good. Right, Linus, um, the examination guidelines also ask Linus to recommend situations in which different leadership styles can be applied. So Linus, it's um, good knowing what each leadership style refers to. Yes. But you should also know when will you apply a particular leadership style within which a particular situation. So, Melanie, the autocratic leadership style, when will you apply that? You would apply this type of leadership style in a crisis, when there's an emergency such as a fire. So, oh. so when there's a fire, you, there's no time to call everybody together. together. And think about who has to do what. So that's the time that one person would assume the authority, hence the other term, name given to autocratic leadership is authoritarian. Okay. So the same would apply if there's load shedding and complete darkness, then somebody needs to make a decision Sorry. about what, there's no time to call people still to a meeting to discuss load shedding. No. Next one. The next one the bureaucratic. is bureaucratic. And this is when you would apply it in a situation where cashers perform routine transactions involving cash. So they would be required to follow rules and regulations and procedures as strictly as possible because there can only be one way of doing it at that particular time. So you would apply the bureaucratic leadership style there. But also in the public service, Melanie, there would be a bureaucratic style applied when the officials needs to do certain things according to certain policies and procedures. Absolutely, and there it is important that policies and procedures are followed, and so then that would be applied as well. For example, if you want to apply for leave, I mean, you can't just stay away. That's correct. Or the use of a GG car, for oh. example. Okay. You can't just go and take a car and drive it. Yeah. Yep. You have to follow the procedure, and there you have to follow that type of leadership. Great stuff, great stuff. Right, democratic. So with a democratic leadership style, you'd apply this when a new policy on staff communication is being implemented. Okay. Because in terms of the democratic leadership style, the leader listens to all of the followers and he values the inputs and opinions. And so 
when that is implemented, you would take everybody's opinions into account first. Great stuff. Mel, Liza Sphere. So in this leadership style, um, this would be the free for all one. Yes. So when the marketing department decides on the design and layout of a marketing campaign, so not necessarily free for all, but we the leader steps back and allows the followers to carry on with the task on hand. And so this is where that would happen. And as we said before, this leadership style lends itself to creativity. Absolutely. And yeah. so they've got the freedom then yes. to continue with the design and the layout of the marketing campaign. And obviously he trusts them to do that That's within correct. the specified period of time. That is correct. Okay, um, the transactional. Melanie, so when would they apply that? So when you apply this type of leadership style is to encourage staff members to reach certain predetermined targets. And then when they reach those targets, they will be rewarded. They will be rewarded. And if they don't reach the targets, yeah. there will be some punishment. Either punishment or they have to go and do it again. Okay, okay, okay. Is that what you do? <laughs> yes, Lisa. <laughs> Okay. Charismatic. And so with the charismatic leadership style, this is the one where the leader uses their personality. So the situation would be to convince the followers to pursue a particular direction when they have doubts about the direction being the correct one. You know, you, you mentioned earlier, Melanie, sorry to break your word there, about um, Nelson Mandela. Yes. And he applied this type of leadership when they, um, I think it was Sandrock, wanted to change the, the emblem of the Springbok rugby team. Yes. And then Mandela came in. And they already made a decision, and he came into the meeting, and he used his char charisma. His charm. His charm, and um, he convinced them. And that's the reason all those Springbok supporters, that's why you've still got the Springbok as your emblem. Okay. Right off. Um, Melanie, briefly, management and leadership theories, leaders and followers, what would be the difference? So this is where we focus on the relationship between the leader and the follower. And so you could have good followers and you can have bad followers. And what the leader would have to do is, is to use the different leadership styles and theories in such a way as to invite these followers to become good followers and in this way we're thinking specifically of um, getting them to work on time being mm. punctual okay being, so that that being, can happen in the classroom also that can happen where the teacher is the leader and the learners are the followers that's correct right that can now, any situation um, situational this particular leadership theory is not based on one specific style or theory. So it implies that the leader is going to use whatever theory is, at his, is available to him or her depending on the situation. Okay, so it's a combination it's of a leadership combination. styles. Okay, good. Transitional. Transitional leadership, this is the one that occurs just before there's that one big change that's going to happen. So this infers process and it will happen over a period of time. But it's leading up to change. Leading up to change. Leading up to Good. change. So that's a critical word to remember. That's Transformational. And this is where leaders explore new ways of doing things to enact change. Okay. So, so they, they could have been used to a particular way of doing it, and correct. the leader explores new ways of correct. doing it. Melanie, wow. Um, I think briefly we need to just look at um, the role or the effect of a positive or a negative personal attitude in the success and leadership. I think here we're looking at a positive attitude of the leader. Okay, How so does that impact on the business? So let's first look at what attitude is. So attitude is the way we see life, what, what we see, how we, you know, our work ethic, what we, we think we should be doing. Um, and that has a few qualities in itself. So it's all about modeling 
that those qualities and often leaders model qualities that the followers want to strive towards okay. and so when leaders leaders show you a positive attitude um, they want to transform the work into a positive experience but it's how they do that so they show you being on time being punctual is correct being modest about the work that you do absolutely um, and so that's one way of striving in a positive way towards yeah. getting it done. Let us, um, you'll find the, 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 the full explanation of the effect of a positive or negative attitude in the success and leadership in your um, resource booklet. And so you can take it from there. Um, expand on it. Ask the teacher to explain what is the impact of a negative attitude. And I'm sure you'll, you'll, you will be able to know that if the leader's attitude is negative, it will have a demoralizing effect and it will uh, impact the organization negatively. And also just positivity refers to the amount of enthusiasm that the leaders um, demonstrate. Uh, the more enthusiastic your leader is, the more likely the follow I follower is to strive towards excellence. Melanie, yeah, there are so many schools who are tuned in, Bezeka and Moderdam mm -hmm. and Acadia. There are hundreds of schools um, with learners and teachers. Unfortunately, um, time <laughs> caught up with us. Uh, there are a million of questions that learners ask, and that's so nice about this session, that learners wanting to know more, more about the concept of leadership and management. Learners, unfortunately, we cannot answer all the questions. I'm going to ask the technician to provide me with a list of the questions, and then if you send me an email, I will then respond to those questions. But Melanie, before we end, um, we've got a few questions for the learners. And teachers, please note, you are not supposed to give the learners the answers. Okay, so Lisa, let's start with the first question. The following concept is about inspiring, motivating and encouraging a team to achieve its goals. What do you think that is? Yeah, uh, remember, it's just one word. We what? dealt with it. It's concept. about inspiring, motivating and encouraging a team to achieve its success. Oh, it's goals. I wonder which school will get the correct answer. Um, the fastest fingers, and I, I'm dimples sure. Dimples. Oh, dimples, dimples. But it's a <laughs> and Kuruman. Um, ah, rangeful. Kuruman. Uh, all of them said, correct. Oh, they've got a, a leader. Well done. Well done. Second question, Melanie. It's oh, there's the answer. It's leadership. leadership. Second one. The second question, these persons are task focused and perform planning, organizing, directing and controlling tasks. Uh -huh. What would we call these what would you call these persons? Oh they actually Ashley said, Ashley, what? Your fingers must be on the on that um, cell phone sleeping there. So because he, he said a manager. And well he's, done. And he's correct. He's correct, yes. Okay, the next one. Even though this leader is task-oriented, he or she takes the feelings and opinions of his or her followers into account. Aha. Uh -huh. Which leadership style oh. is this? I wonder. I think they are stumped here, eh? <laughs> um, Because it's not exactly verbatim. Yeah, but now let's look at the clues. Task-oriented takes feelings and opinions of the followers into account. So it can only Aha, be... There we've got an answer. Go. Can only be the democratic leader. And, and, and it was rentable, rentable. That's correct. Uh, we had the first answer. Melanie, this is the very last one. Okay. Um, this type of leader is strictly task-oriented, does not negotiate and makes all the decisions. I wonder why are you looking at me so strangely <laughs> when you read that um, statement. Okay. Just read it again. This type of leader is strictly task orientated, oh. does not negotiate and makes all the decisions and rangeful and a number of oh, other people. Yeah. Stakalani, Damien, are the, the, the correct answer is just And the correct fast answer and is autocratic is leader. It, is it autocratic? That is correct. That is correct. Let One us more. No, 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 no. I'm going to be in deep trouble if I allow one more. Lillis, our time has run out. Okay. Um, I just got the indication that um, we've got one minute left. Before I sign off, let me just ask Melanie, please, would you just have some concluding, say, uh, a concluding sentence? Oh, gosh, on leadership and management, one sentence is very restrictive. Oh, just, just, just <laughs> encourage um, Lillis. 
But learners, please, when you look at this section, it's a section where you can score marks very easily by knowing the concepts. So please study, formulate a glossary for yourselves at the back of your book, know what is the leadership styles, know what the leadership theories are, know what personal attitude is, know what the role of personal attitude is in, in um, leadership styles, and then just sit down and read through them and really understand it. Melanie, thank you for that nice summary. I could not have done it better. Linus, I told you, you are not going to be disappointed by us having Melanie here with us. Melanie, thank you for your time okay. and effort and all the effort you put in in compiling the presentation for us and also the notes. Linus, suffice for me to say now to thank you also and your teachers for um, spending the past 40, 50 minutes with us. I trust that you find it, find it useful and that um, indeed you will benefit from it when you do write your June exams. Please study hard, everything of the best, and until we see one another again, goodbye, travel safely, and till next time, goodbye.